pause that because it sounds like we have game audio this time. Yes, we do. Quite nice. Okay. Frigg versus Mildred. Frigg has Cabe in cap. Mildred's still using her uh, Jane cap team. Mildred starts Zale. Frigg starts Farron. Hits the firm handshake. Whoever Mildred ends this turn with is not going to be able to switch out safely. Now, Frigg also has a Yasmin. I do not know if that's ambidextrous or tough Yasmin. Either would be interesting, however. Mildred brings in Eric. Eric and Farron shake hands, like all competitors do at the start of a game. Frigg switching in Yasmin. Mildred has an Eric in play. We might just see a fireworks happen. Yep. That is a flashy fireworks. It's going to be three energy in Mildred's battery building up. That is a tough Yasmin. With what looked like Lucky Pendant healing 17 every round. That's going to be pretty hard to deal with if you don't have a great method of knocking her out. Longsword, of course, has a very high amount of uses, so it's very hard to remove that with Acid Armor or uh, or Pester Rust Spray. That's the word, Rust Spray. I I'm not surprised the testers are doing well. I am interested to see how the uh, how all the other players are sort of how they play off how the testers have been doing after this tournament, you know, really, really have the meta evolve over time. When strategies start sort of uh, becoming more visible. Team diversity in winners is nice to see. There's been quite a lot of team diversity. Not too many uh repeats of like exact same strategies even the fell teams we've seen have been different and the cabin teams we've seen have been different in these different ways which i think really goes to show sort of the the balance of the game in its current state mildred runs a disruption wave that sad is going to make both of them unable to gain energy but one longsword takes out eric Heals back up to 85 due to that lucky pendant tough. Mildred grabs Zale. Now Mildred does have a full battery now. Mildred has a few more options available defensively. Frigg switches into Farron. Farron takes the peck on the cheek and rolls with it. Farron's emotional defense is dropped wildly, though. Is dying your life entire life as brackets? Oh no. I uh, I don't have anything I can really support uh, materially, other than I really believe in you. Um, you're doing great so far. Uh, this has been running very smoothly, all things considered. At least on, from my ex perception. Thank you for TOing this lace dog. Frigg brings in Tazu after Farron died to pecking to death, Prometheus style. Fate of all TOs, bracket brain, yes. Frigg looks like she's trying to set up some extra digital defense on Tazu. Mildred's fell, or Mildred's, Mildred's Zale has gone uncontested so far. It's 
see if she keeps Zale in or if switches him out. Packs Tazu. Tazu's getting packed. Backlash. Takes 10. Small hits here and there. Parries the Firewall. Mildred did not want Zale to take any damage, and now Zale has a decoy. Which is going to be very hard to deal with on Frigg's end. Whatever move Frigg uses first is not going to work, thanks to that decoy. So Frigg has to get rid of that, I would say, as soon as possible. Because no matter what, that's going to prove itself to be an issue. I love, by the way, how the decoy kind of shows the background in this very, like, mirage sort of style. Very, uh, very fun effect there. It's a very careful, very, uh very tense moment here. Mildred switches out of Zale, brings in Tazu. There is now a backlash battle as both Tazus will be pelted by various moves. Oh, interesting. Frigg's Tazu has coffee. So, if Mildred happens to give Frigg uh a feeling on their Tazu. Uh, her Tazu is going to be able to drink coffee and remove that feeling. Tazu is angry. The infuriating lease blocking a move for that turn. Frig is ready to use fireworks to build some extra energy. But Firewall is going to make Tazu really tanky on Mildred's side. Well, Frigg now has two full batteries. Some very good resource management here. Lunch invite onto the Tasu. Frigg always has coffee available, though. We'll have to see how long she wants to uh, hold off. Looks like she's going to flourish coffee immediately. Which is going to give Tazu a very nice speed boost as well. I think that's a maximum speed boost. I don't remember exactly how many arrows is the maximum that a character can have. Uh, if we could get a uh, mechanics check for that. Mildred brings Zale back in. There's that flourish coffee. Eight arrows is max, cool. Frigg's speed on her Tazu is huge now. She's considering switching in Capen, interestingly. Zale still has that decoy. It is proving to be quite a scary factor here. Mildred brings in Jane. Frigg brings in Capen. Now, Frigg's Cabin doesn't have an emotional move, so won't be able to do much damage directly to Jane. But Frigg did put Blackjack on Cabin, which is always an option. Being tired can be pretty useful. Oh, I see. Tazu does have eight arrows. Tazu, back to Tazu. We switch it around. Back to the Tazu mirror. It keeps reappearing. And Frigg now locks in an attack this time. So if Mildred were to switch into Zale, that Zale would get hit. Or that Zale's uh, decoy would get hit. Like so. So the decoy is gone. Zale is now vulnerable once more, but Mildred does have a full battery left. If that becomes a successful parry, then that Tazu would, or then that Zale 
would get another decoy. But that successful parry does need a move to be chosen. And it looks like Frigg has decided to switch off of Tazu here. So the question is going to be, does Mildred know that it's going to switch and not parry? Or did Mildred predict a bigger attack and parry? Or would that attack have actually hurt Zale enough to matter is, I guess, the other question. Let's wait and see. Zale does have a very high digital defense, able to take quite a few hits from Tazu normally. Mildred switches into Tazu. Frigg switches into Lise. Not quite the Tazu mirror from before. But we know Mildred's Tazu has Lunge and Bite. So this is looking to be a bit of a pre precarious situation for Frigg. That heart to heart could have pretty bad consequences for Frigg. Pop ups on Mildred's side aims to put a stop to all the switching around going on. Tiny bit of damage from heart to heart. Candy Pearls has popped on Mildred's side. They're mostly even in health now, but Tazu no longer has a necklace available. Lunch invite onto uh, Lise, but Frigg tidies up, removes those pop-ups again. Lunch invite is definitely going to make it difficult to tidy up much longer, though. Flourishes heart to heart. Mildred's Tazu has two uses of Lunch Invite left over, three uses of pop-ups, and still has more uses of Firewall to go. There's that heart-to-heart. -heart. Tazu takes 30 that time. Lise no longer feels hungry. Fireworks does not do much damage to Tazu, but Frigg's Lise still has a pretty solid positioning over Mildred's Tazu due to being able to take out those pop-ups like that. Frigg brings in her own Tazu. These Tazus have been very pivotal this game. Tazu, in the right circumstances, can be a very commanding character, thanks to a solid access to some good digital moves and some great tricks, thanks to the... Uh, what is that? Is that a me? Or is that Magnate that has that? I want to say Ami. Uh, Ami? It's like it's like French. Uh, with Lunch Invite and Coffee pop-ups from Modder. Very solid moveset all around. And Backlash makes it hard to attack Tazu without getting hurt yourself. So they're both opting to Lunch Invite each other. Though the lunch invite on Mildred's Tazu is going to kill her quicker. Not to mention Frigg still has coffee available in the back to remove that hungry. Mildred only has about two turns of that Tazu left. Frigg brings in Lise, infuriates Tazu. And Tazu, Mildred chose a, a trick. Tazu could not perform it. This is looking to be the last turn of Tazu on Mildred's side, unless she switches out. Frigg switches back into Tazu, takes 10 from pop-ups. The lunch invite was negated because Frigg is already hungry. There goes Mildred's Tazu after so long so many lunch invites and pop-ups. Frigg has the remaining Tazu. There can only be one, and it is three hungry. I myself am too hungry right now, uh, but not, not too much hungry, if you know what I mean. I won't die until I'm five hungry, and that should be well in advance. Stream skipped a little bit there.
Mildred, thinking very carefully, decides to bring in Sela. Now they're Frigg is down one character, but Mildred's down two. Mildred still has that extra battery left over, though. Frigg brings in Caben. Caben, of course, everyone's favorite physical defender. I love the little pop practice stick does. Ooh, increases that Sela stats. Sela is a determined Sela, not a underdog Sela. Jane has not used any moves so far. That's right. That's right. Going to cheer on Kaben, heal everybody up a little bit, at least in the future. That acidic armor means there are no more uses of cheer left over, though. Of course... It appears Frigg no longer has a decent source of emotional damage, so Frigg has to figure out how to deal with this Jane. Jane, an incredibly hard to deal with tank if you do not have quite the setup for it. Yasmin switches in safely, heals 27 this time thanks to the cheer. has a lot of moves available, though with Jane out, Yasmin only has two uses of bandage, really. Luckily, Longsword, a lot harder to deal with, or to remove uses of uh, with acidic armor. Mildred switches out. Frig bandages safely. No longer fearing Cheery. Excited. Frigg is switching. Mildred, meanwhile, has Sela in play. Could raise her attack even more from Practice Stick. She opts to do so. Thorn pendant on Kaben deals a little bit of extra damage. Attack is error three? Ooh, that's not good. Error three may be a secret hidden stat, but I don't think it is. I would wager that error three is a bad thing. Mildred brings Jane back in. Heart to heart, able to deal a little bit of damage to Jane. Gets Jane under max health at least. Still hasn't used two of Jane's moves on Mildred's side. And Biplast Claws is a solid coverage option that's making switch-ins harder. Firewall is the lease. Lease heals a little bit more, thanks to the Excited and the Lucky Pendant. Mildred has some very solid defensive options, but isn't quite able to get the damage in on Frake that she needs. Uses another bypass clause, but it's not able to clean out Lease here. Confirm the kill. No more heart-to-heart -heart uses on Lease, though, is going to make it a little more tricky, since Frig can no longer heal up Lease that way. And it's going to make dealing with Jane that much harder. Frigg takes this opportunity to tidy up and remove those pop-ups finally. Make it a little easier to play the switch out game. Frigg going over her options. While Mildred, Mildred Zale being so 
These two are playing so carefully. Yes, this is a great match to look at for this sort of careful play, considering all their options. Much better than me, who is insta-locking moves. Frigg survives the hunger, but needs to flourish coffee this turn unless she is okay with losing Tazu. Of course, Zale has no more uses of Shriek, only Peck and one remaining move we haven't seen yet. Means that there isn't quite the emotional burst of damage, but Peck can still do a lot of damage thanks to uh, the lowered emotional defense. Does not quite get it though. Frig is able to heal up a little bit more with Tazu and still hang in there. Of course, Frig's Tazu is almost out of moves in general. One firewall and then lunch invite is all that she has left to be very careful with how she uses those. Those lunch invites could be crucial. It's of course one effective way to deal with Jane's huge defenses. Matazu struggle is low move uses, of course. Something that Jane is effective against. But there hasn't been a lot of Jane brought in against the Tazu. This peck finally knocks out Tazu. That means that lunch invite is gone. Tazu is out. Zill will be slowly taking damage from that hunger. Frig brings in Lease. Frig has three characters left. Mildred has three left. Of course, Frigg has two characters that are at about max health. Kabin has 118, which I didn't even know was possible. And with only Tidy and Fireworks available for Lease, it seems like Frigg is just going to take this opportunity to gain some extra energy. Hopefully deal a little bit more damage to knock out the Zale sooner than later. Frigg has one full battery. Mildred still has a full battery as well. Mildred's been saving that battery for quite a while by now. It could be the difference between winning and losing, though. Frigg parries this pack. Mildred takes a little bit from Fireworks. 30 from Hunger. This is Zale's last turn if Mildred decides to keep him out. But Frigg has also been able to slowly remove uses of Peck in the meanwhile. So even if Mildred removed Hunger, that Peck is still pretty much a non-issue. Except it did kill Lise on the way out. Zale was able to get one more kill. Zale dies of hunger. Very hungry these days. They need to build more restaurants in the tower. Yasmin and Kaben versus Jane and Sela. Going to have to really play around uh, move uses and really play around physical damage here. Yes, with Zail out of the way, Kaben and Yasmin don't have as much of a threat. They can block pretty much whatever Sela does. At least one hit should be able to, they should be able to take. Firewall on Jane is going to be difficult for Kaben to deal with, however. And since Mildred still has one battery, there's a chance that Jane just parries and gets that decoy. So we'll have to see how this plays out. Honestly, I think it's still anyone's game.
Sela and Cabin. Holding on to those heart to hearts may be the key to dealing with Jane. Flourish Blackjack makes the opponent dizzy, which means they cannot parry and they're still tired. So if Frigg gets this off, it means that she doesn't have to worry about Mildred parrying with Sela at the very least. Yeah, this Cabin does not have Admire, which is a pretty common a pretty common option for Cabins that want a decent emotional move. But Blackjack nowadays is very useful as a uh, just a very solid control option. See here. Bomb Locket! The Bomb Locket removes the Dizzy and the Tired! Of course, Mildred flourished, so she can't parry anyways with Sela, but that Tired is huge. That would have made it pretty much impossible for Mildred to flourish anyways. And now Frigg has to either only do a little bit of damage and survive one huge hit here. She did not survive. Cabin is knocked out. He is dead. It's just Yasmin versus the club. Yasmin comes in sad, unable to gain energy. Luckily, as said before, Longsword is decent at Jane because it's a lot harder for acidic armor to wear away at Longsword, like it has so many other moves in this match. But the Bandage and Poison Dagger do not have many uses. looking pretty good for Yasmin. The only question is if Mildred is able to build another battery before Jane comes in. Flicker Glove gets in that hit. Make sure that Mildred can get at least one extra energy before Sayla dies for an extra extra energy. Yasmin's back to full from tough. So, neither fighter can really deal a significant amount of damage to each other. Frigg is opting to flourish Poison Dagger before Mildred has a chance to parry. That's going to make Jane tired. Not only does it lower the attack like Poison Dagger normally was, or normally would, Jane has three stacks of tired now, so that one bypass clause deals 30 damage to herself. And just like that, I think that's going to be it for this game. Bandage puts Yasmin back at full to guarantee that she survives. The bypass clause hits, but it doesn't do anything about that tired. Mildred is knocked into losers by Frigg on the back of a last character scenario there. Wow. Well played by the players there.